before I looked at MicroStrategy as this really helps me enable the business, right? Now I'm looking at it and going, this really helps me increase revenue. Right before, I think it's 1st of December. And that was the first time we all got to see hyperintelligence. And uh, <laughs> I'll never forget the reaction of, of the crowd. We're going, there's no way. I mean, how do you have a hyperlink under a website that's not yours and can pull the entire options, whether to buy it, what it's worth, on someone else's website. I mean, it was, I mean, this is like magic. Having fast analytics and analytics at their fingertips during a live auction is extremely crucial. They have probably 30 seconds to be able to know if they want to buy a vehicle, what they want to buy the vehicle for, and how many we need, and in which market. We have large growth plans that we wanted to achieve. We needed to find a good solution that can help us scale and grow and be more efficient at doing it. We had reached the breaking point where our capacity to run the business was being greatly hindered by our technological capabilities. The solution to this is MicroStrategy. Showing a massive data set to somebody in an Excel spreadsheet is just old fashioned these days. When I can show it to them in a hypercard, it's so simple to use and present it in a tool that they're already familiar with. They're already going to these websites. They already know these things. We don't have to build anything new. We're just giving them additional data and additional analytics for them to be able to do their job better. By bringing in hyperintelligence and hypercards, the collaboration just gets better. And it's actually more excitement because they're going, wait a minute, I'm, now I'm doing this in 10 seconds when it took me four minutes before. Hello everyone and welcome to today's session, Designing Hyperintelligence Cards. My name is Nikki Coria and I'm a VP of Sales Engineering. With me today is Greg Axelrod, a Senior Sales Engineer at MicroStrategy. If you joined the previous Hyper session, you learn how to inject instant insights into every experience using the latest hyperintelligent innovations. In this session, you will learn how to use the design thinking methodology to design hypercards that solve business pain points. Our customers have been using this amazing methodology with great success. One of them is Sonic Automotive, a leading US auto retailer that uses hypercards to make complicated buying decisions during car auctions. As you saw in the video, their agents have about 30 seconds to decide if they wanna buy a vehicle what they want to buy the vehicle for, how many to buy, and in which market. Through HyperCards, agents have all the necessary information they need to make a decision at their fingertips. In a nutshell, HyperCards help them scale, grow, and be more efficient. By the end of this session, you will have a pretty good understanding of how design thinking can help you get from an idea to a card just like the one you saw for Sonic Automotive. So let's get started. Uh, Greg, many people in our audience have never heard the term design thinking before. What exactly is Design Thinking Workshop? Thank you, Nikki, and hello, everybody. Um, so let's first make a connection between the design thinking methodology and building hypercards and see how those two concepts really connect together. So what is design thinking methodology? It's a special way for solving problems. So what we've done with this methodology is we've adapted this to solve business problems. Um, and the way it sounds, it really it's not connected to software development. It's not connected to MicroStrategy. It's not connected to really any specific particular industry or product. It's a general methodology. Um, What's so special about it, it puts a human, a business user in the center. It does not put a technology in the center. It puts the business user with their pain points and their goals in the center. So that's, that's the whole purpose about this methodology. And in our experience, Design Thinking Workshop really is the best way to design relevant cards that people will actually use. Now, of course, it's possible for us for pre-sales or for the IT team at the customer to build the cards themselves without the input from the business users. But again, a lot of time what happens is that once the cards are delivered, they may not have 
what the business users are expecting. What we found out from building hypercards and working with users and deploying them is that each group, each line of business in, a, in an enterprise would require their own special cards. And cards, so cards are very, very specific to a certain area of business. And it's been a case where we had maybe three or four design thinking workshops with a single customer, each one for a specific uh, department, one for finance, one for HR, one for sales, and one maybe for call center, and on and on and on. Each, each department may have between, let's say, three, 30 and 300 people. But, and that's okay. Most of them, will fill, we can fulfill their needs by building those specific cards for a specific group of people. Okay, thank you, Greg. We now all understand that design thinking workshop is a process, a methodology for creative problem solving. What is the value of these workshops? Why would somebody consider doing them? So our approach to this is very simple, is that we all know that great technology, even like hyperintelligence, is valuable as long as it solves immediate business problems. Otherwise, it's nothing but a cool toy. It's a novelty that looks nice, but what? why do people want to use it? That's the big question. So design thinking workshops, what they do, they allow us to work with lines of business to find out what their data-related pain points and goals are. What are the problems? What are the challenges that those people have in every, everyday work lives? What prevents them from doing their jobs faster and smarter? And how can they serve their customers better? So those are the things we try to find out during the workshops. It's essentially a brainstorming session, the first part. And the second part is trying to figure out, OK, of all the things we discussed, what are the most important ones? And so at the end of the workshops, we usually know which problems, very specific problems, can be solved with hyperintelligence. And we also built a few cards at the end of the workshop as well. So we've, we've done a large number of those workshops with all kinds of customers, from, from retail to uh, pharmaceuticals to insurance and on and on and on. And it's never been a case where someone would say, well, OK, this is not so interesting. Why are we taking part in the workshop? So everybody likes it because I think at the end of the day, Everybody likes to talk, talk about their problems. And it's also very interesting for the BI teams to hear directly from the business users, uh, to, to hear what is going on with their business, what are the challenges they're facing. So I think it's a win-win for everybody when we do those workshops. OK. Now, who should participate in the design thinking workshop? And do they need to have any special skills or knowledge of microstrategy? Sure, Nikki. So the good news is that no prior knowledge or experience microstrategy are required. No advanced preparation on the business user side. Uh, because remember, this workshop is about the people, the business users. It's not about technology. So no knowledge of any kind, of any anything related to microstrategy required at all. Now, since about March, we've been doing workshops remotely, meaning that the setup was, would be about the same. So we'll have a whiteboard behind somebody, and then the users will be invited via Zoom to join, and it will be pretty much as the same flow as we, as we do in person. So this worked out perfectly. Um, and about the number of people, we asked between five and seven people to join the workshop. Uh, this is a good number, considering that we, we dedicated about two and two, two and a half hours for the workshop. Uh, what we ask for is that the business users be from the same line of business. So one set of people will be from HR, another from finance, another for customer service. So each one of them will have their own workshops. Um, and all of the people will be doing pretty much the same kind of job. So we, we, we ask not to have you know, supervisors, managers, and then frontline employees in the same workshop because the reason they would have all different kind of set of pain points and goals. And again, preferably to be the, the same people, let's say, from finance. Why? Because they will have very similar same set of uh, pain points and goals. Now, about the BI team, what we usually ask is that the BI team do not take active participations in workshops. They are very welcome to listen in, but not join. The reason is very simple. The BI team will have a completely different set of issues and pain points and goals and challenges than the line of business. 
that that's that's the main reason and the time as i said it's about two and two and a half hours uh, workshops and it's never been an issue when it goes to two and a half hours because again people like to usually talk about their problems and we never i never heard the fact that someone said well this is already too long it's usually flows pretty quickly Greg, at a high level, can you walk us through how a design thinking workshop is conducted? Sure. So the design thinking workshop methodology tells us that uh, we should do, do a set of exercises to accomplish our goals. So we will do some exercise together. The one, the first one that takes longest is called brainstorming. And what we do is this. We ask business users to put down some pain points and goals and challenges on a piece of post-it notes and of course via zoom they tell us what they are and then the host of the workshop or of the workshop will put them on the, on the board so here's an example customer data scattered across many screens this is actually the one we hear all the time during the workshops all the time very very common one that's a pain point another one another pain point that people would have would say something like this Eliminate a need to search in multiple locations. That's a pain point. So we put pain points on the board. And usually in about an hour, once we go over all the participants, all this whiteboard will be completely full with different things. What we do next is that we put prior priorities on the categories. And we First, before we do this, we name those categories. So we call, we put different pain points into and goals into buckets. So this one, the customer scattered bucket, we'll, we'll just call it customer. And the other one, let's call it search. So the next exercise will be asking the users, okay, which buckets are more important to you? Which categories are more important? So let's say in this case, a customer category would be very important and search will be less important. Next step what we do is we say, well, okay, we know that the customer is very important. We know what the problems are. Can we solve those problems with a hypercard? And we ask the line of business, to design hypercards with us together. And so in this case, let's see, here's a hypercard we designed. It will be a card for a customer, for a member. And this is what very similar what we've done for one of the customers. So what, 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 what would the user see on the customer or member hypercard? They will see member ID, date of birth, alert, address phone number, let's say they see premium, last claim, last call, case manager, status, referral, and on and on and on. It could be multiple cards there. So uh, this is one of the very important deliveries of the workshop, deliverables. A hypercard. We design it together with the business user. So we know what, what's on the hypercard will solve immediate business, business problems. And f as a final step in the workshop, what we do is we say, well, where would you like to see those hypercards? So it could be somewhere on the web, or it could be in Outlook, or it could be on a mobile phone. And my hyperintelligence supports all three of those deliver, delivery methods for hypercards. So that's, that's, a, that's an overview. That's how the workshops usually flow. What you describe, Greg, is really, really important because you're not just coming up with ideas that could benefit the business, but rather taking a rare opportunity to really step into your user's shoes and understand them on a deeper, a deeper level. What are the deliverables of a design thinking workshops? What are the next steps? Sure, the next step is very simple. The next step would be for the host of the workshop um, and by the way, what you see on the screen now, this is the, those are the actual pictures from Design Thinking Workshop. So some of them are done in person, but some of them you can see they're just pictures of whiteboards. They've been done via Zoom. And you can see how, how people are involved, how, how it's floating. So back to your question, uh, what are the deliverables? What, what happens next? Well, the sales engineer usually will build Sam sample hypercards for the customer using MicroStrategy. So now we're building the actual cards in MicroStrategy product. 
The next, what's going to usually happens is that the sales engineer will do several sessions with the BI team to make sure that the data presented in those cards actually makes sense and it's available within the data warehouse of the customer. So we go through usually several design rounds with the BI team, which is a very important, very important uh, step. What we do next is that we do a readout session with the same group of people that took part in the workshop to show them, okay, based on what you, what we came up during the workshop, here are the hypercards would be built for you. And this is how they will see, they will work in your applications. Let's say in some CRM application, or this is how they will, you will see them in Outlook. Those are the keywords. This is how the, you move your mouse over and something pops up. So we go through the whole thing with the business users to make sure that what we delivered actually makes sense to them and will solve their problems. And we get their feedback. Sometimes business users will say, well, this is, this is great, but we want to see a few tweaks. We want to see this. And then we can go through another design round with the BI team. And once we deliver the cards, once the business users are satisfied, then the next step would be for the customer to work with the MicroStrategy account team uh, to or the next steps, which could be licensing or it could be a pilot to deploy the uh, small number of cards to a small number of users just to see how it works in production environment. Great. Greg, can you share with us some examples of cards created during a design thinking workshop for an actual customer? Sure. So let's go through through the cards. I think it will be very interesting for everybody to see what 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 is actually happens in the field, how how the cards are delivered. So the first thing you see are the finance cards. So those those were delivered as part of design thinking workshop to the finance business users uh, for a company in manufacturing business. And you can see there are three types of cards. One is the cost center card. So in this case, the people in the finance team they wanted to see several uh, KPIs related to cost center, such as headcount, Y2D spending, uh, certain accounts, all in one card. And as the, usually we hear, the situation is very <laughs> it's as simple as that. Uh, all this information is, yes, it's available in different applications, but they want to see this all in one place in the hyper card. And this is exactly what we've done here. The second two cards are the planned cards. So finance team wants to see very specific KPI for, for each plant that the company has. So things such as, um, what are the, things such as, let me see, production, headcount, uh, scrapping waste, supplies, and so on and on and on. And again, all this information, yes, it lives somewhere, but not in one place. So usually it might take a finance team, somebody, I don't know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes to put it all together, go to different systems. But here it's all in one card, and it takes a couple of seconds to read this. So let's look at a different set of cards. Now, this is for the same company, only for the sales department. So we work with the sales team. We went through the same process, design thinking workshop, and, we, and the sales team came up with those three cards. The first card is a material card. So think of it as a product card. And this is related to what the salespeople are dealing with. People asking them, the customers asking them about products, and they want to have a give them a very quick answer. This is the pricing. This is how much we have in the inventory. And this is maybe internally, this is how we're doing with the product. This is how well it's selling and, and so on. So this is exactly what they wanted to see in one place. The next one is salesperson card. This card is designed more for sales managers and also for salespeople because sometimes they don't know who the other salespeople are. They don't know what territories they cover. And this is the perfect place for, for, for them to see this. So they move their mouse over a name of a sales rep and they can see all the basic KPIs for that sales rep, the accounts and how they're doing and so on. And the final card for sales team we delivered is the customer card. Again, if they have a call with a customer, they want to be able to see the very important KPIs for that particular customer, uh, how the customer is doing, how well they're how well we're selling to them, what needs to be, what can be improved, and so on. So that's the that's the customer card. Again, this information available in some one CRM, another CRM, maybe another system internal, but with cards, all of this comes together in one place. So let's look at another set of cards. Now, human resources card. 
And they had, again, a very, very specific need that I don't think we could have guessed before we started the workshop because everybody, every department, every company will have a completely different set of pain points and goals than the same department in another company. So they had two, two requirements, basically. One is the manager card. It's difficult for them at, at this point to see information about a manager because, because the this, this, this stuff is scattered all over the place. So now they have one easy way to see the manager information. So some basic KPIs about a manager, you know, who is, how long he's been with a company, who is he's managing, and so on. And the second one is a plant card. Notice something very interesting is that finance people also had the plant card, plant card. But what HR wants to see is a very, very different specific KPIs very different from what finance people want to see. So for plant, HR wants to see things like headcount, turnover of the employees, overtime, and so, so some very HR specific things. So those are H human resources cards. And now let's look finally at, a, actually we have one more. So let's look at the pharmaceutical cards. Ph pharmaceutical cards, this is delivered for a pharma company uh, for their sales, sales team. And they, his, and they have one, pain point is having all information about a doctor. So healthcare practitioner, let's call him a doctor, in one place. And it's very specific to the sales size, sales cycle. So it has to do with the fact uh, how well, you know, this, this particular doctor, how well they're connected to them, who are the peers of this doctor, um, is he actively promoting the products of the company, and, and so on. So very specific KPIs for very specific drugs that the company is offering. And again, this information is currently in different data warehouses with, with hypercards. It all comes in one place. And finally, finally, let's look at the last set of cards. I think one of the most interesting use cases that we see frequently are the call center cards using MicroStrategy hyperintelligence. Um, for this call center, for this customer, we designed at least, I think, five or six cards because they had many, many needs. Uh, to solve very specific problem. As you know, what is the goal of a call center? The goal is to serve customers faster and better and give them answers fast. Because if you don't, then you know the customer will have five minutes talking to you. If you talk to them for 20 minutes, then they'll get more and more uh, irritated, upset because it's taking too long. They don't get the answer very fast. So the purpose of this, to put information together, living in different places so the customer can answer a question uh, a, a rep can answer a question from a customer from a customer in, in you know in, in 10 seconds without going through different systems and, and putting the customer on the phone. So what kind of things they're asking for? Well, first is the member authorization card. This has to do with the fact as the question is, okay, who is who is allowed to talk on on, on the behalf of the customer? Um, who else is allowed? So this is specific answering this question. Uh, maybe I'm calling on behalf of my grandmother, let's say, and so this, the, the rep would know immediately who's allowed to talk. And then member claims, very simple question. What claims did this particular member file in the last 30 days? What are the last five claims? So the reps here can see the claims on the card immediately, and they, they know really what's going on, the, the, the volume of those claims and, and what those claims dealing with. And it's the, the last thing we see is the member touch points. And this is interesting because for this particular uh, company, it seems that there was no consistent view of all the different things were happening with the, of the outreach of the customers. So some people were calling customers, the other departments were e uh, emailing them, the other were sending them mailings. And the, 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 the reps on the phone, they didn't really know what this particular customer had received uh, so clearly. And now this card allows you. So they call them touch points. So those are all the touch points that happened uh, with, the, with that particular customer. So, Nikki, I think when people, when everybody look in this, they will get, I think, a very good overview of um, what kind of cards and how the process works with the design thinking workshops. Everything you share with us today, Greg, is really, really exciting. How should our audience request a design thinking workshop? And is there a cost associated with it? So, the good news. The design thinking, thinking workshops are completely free. They will be done by your pre-sales team, very likely your sales engineer. Uh, we've been doing the workshops for the last 
I would say two years with very good results. So it's something that we certainly promote and offer to all of our customers. And as a next step, please talk to your account executive or sales engineer, and um, they will set it up for you. That's simple as that. Great. Thank you. Great, Greg, thank you for walking us through the design thinking methodology and its benefits today. Our audience, if you want to learn more about MicroStrategy's hyperintelligence offering, we also recommend you attend our next two sessions in this track, Hypervision and new features for 2021 and Hyper.now software as a service. Thank you for your time. Now let's get to our Q&A.